A very good morning once again and thank you for staying tuned to Sunrise at Sea. We are streaming live on our website and that is on www.ctv.co.ug. Welcome to the Twitter Jabs too. My name is Agi Uase and we are continuing the conversation in regard to Nira and its services to Ugandans. And like we talked about earlier on our Twitter Jabs one, this comes at the hate of controversy and uproar on social media as people want to understand after after um, the new vision published that NIRA intends to increase the fees for changing of particulars on your national identity card from 50,000 Uganda shillings to 500,000 Uganda shillings. Well, joining me at the center of this conversation is the executive director of National Identification and Registration Authority, and that is NIRA, and this is Miss Kisembo. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, madam. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us on Sunrise at Sea on CTV. Thank you. Well, we'll, with all the controversy that is going on in this country in regard to NIRA increasing uh, the charge or the fee uh, for changing of particulars on national identity cards from 50,000 to 100,000 uh, to 500,000 Uganda shillings, I would like to know from you. Um, NIRA was born in 2015 from the Registration of Persons Act of 2015. Has the organization achieved its mandate? as of now. Nira was born in 2015 with a ninefold mandate. Yes. To create and maintain a register. Yes. Register birth and death. Register aliens. Issue national IDs. Harmonize and collect information. And also um, verify and authenticate yes. information. Yes. Has the organization achieved its mandate? To an extent, yes. 63% of Ugandans have, are registered. Yes. 19 million of them have an ID. And at least on average, between 800,000 to 1 million births are registered yes. in a year. Yes. So has it achieved its mandate fully? No. Is it continuing to achieve its mandate? Yes. Is there such an information? Yes. In the last six months, yes. the, in the first six months of the financial year, we had 26 million searches on the register from telecoms, banks, and various entities. Yes. So back to your question. Has it achieved its mandate to an extent? Yes. But it's a, it's a journey that we continue to travel to achieve our mandate. Okay, and would like to know uh, from you what are some of the challenges that NIRA is facing um, in, uh, in providing services to Ugandans? The challenges, if I were to summarize our challenges, our challenges are threefold. One is technology. The technology we are using is 10 years old. Yes. As such, it's slow, it has an impact on, um, like, we don't have enrollment online. Yes. Um, and issues related around there. Yes. So there are issues around technology, service and maintenance agreements around there. So one of our major challenges is, one, obsolete technologies, but there are also certain legal challenges around the technology. Yeah. The second major challenge is staffing and human resource. We are, we are an organization, there are 17.2 million, around about that, unregistered Ugandans. However, we, have, we are present in only 117 districts, 112 and five divisions in Kampala, and um, there are 146 districts in Uganda. Okay. So we're not present everywhere. And uh, if I were to take the ratio of unregistered Ugandans to the staffing, we have, for every 50,000 unregistered Ugandans, we have one staff. Now, if I were to break that down to the specifics in data processing, we have 10 people 
of in the, the whole unit of data processing has 25 people but the people who actually look at the forms of everybody they are about 10 on the structure right now then there are other logistical issues like sometimes we are not at, uh, at NERA mm -hmm. um, at the headquarters um, the budget for fuel and stuff like that uh, and yet the amount of work that has to be done to try and bring services closer to the people because even if you are at a district headquarters yes 76 percent of uganda's population lives in rural areas what that means it's it, it may be prudent for you to move closer to them or as close to them as you can yes yes okay well you've highlighted some of the challenges that nira is facing uh, in registering ugandans and availing all the services that they should be to ugandans mm -hmm. however uh there is an uproar there seems to be an uproar on social media um and it's all about the process of uh, changing particulars. Now, I would like you to take us through the process of changing of particulars and also what the current fee stands at and are there cases where applicants are made to pay for errors made by NERA uh, officials? Okay, thank you. There are nine types of change of particulars. Yes. The one that is particularly causing an uproar is the one on date of birth. You can change your name legally. You can add a name. If you get married, you can remove a name. If you divorce, or for whatever reason you can, maybe it doesn't appear on your other certificates, you can add or remove a name. There are a couple of seven, several other changes, but I'm going to focus today on the change of particulars relating to date of birth. Now, in the case of date of birth, it's not even a change. Hmm. Because as I asked you earlier, how many times can you be born? You can only be born once, yes. Absolutely. Is that true? Mm. You can have many names. You can add, remove, whatever. But you can only be born once. once and you can only die once. Yes. Okay? So, there are four categories of scenarios where it's called correction of an error relating to date of birth. So it's not even a change of particular because the law recognizes that you are not, you can't change mm -hmm. your date of birth. Yes. You can only correct an error relating to date of birth. So what are the circumstances under which people correct an error relating to date of birth. The, I'll pick four for purposes of time. Number one, legitimately, the information you had at the time of registration told you you were born on such and such a date. And how does that happen? We have some children born in IDP camps. We have some children born in war torn areas. We have some children who are born, grew up with their mother died at birth. So maybe the information they had at time of birth was not sufficient. But as you grow, maybe information comes in and you realize that no, 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 no. Wait a minute. This is not the time I was actually born. So the law in section 64 guides that you can correct that error. However, there are certain supporting documents that you must provide us. And in the case of date of birth, we request that you give us documents as close as possible to your time of birth. Okay. Now anyway, that's one category. There's a second category. We have young people below 21 years, below 18 years, trying to go to Oman, hmm. trying to go to the Middle East. You, a young girl, 15, 16, walks into the room, and because they don't take those below a certain age, they are asserting strongly that they are 21 years. Hmm. Okay? 
just to travel. Just to do what? To travel. And the risks they are in. Because the reason they said 21 and above, I don't know what advised that. But I'm, I'm sure it, it has bearing on the capability to handle the psychosocial aspects related to work abroad. And anyway, below 18, you are still a child. So that's another category of people that we experience a great deal on. We also have 44,000 persons who, at the time of registering, would now be anywhere between 60 to 80 years. But after the social protection grant, which gives people above 80 a monthly stipend, we have 44,000 who want to be 80. So it's under those circumstances we are saying, what measures can be, any, there are already measures in the law. For example, if you tell a lie, you are, if the lie is not occasioned by us. Yes. There's a, there, there's a, the 50,000 is a processing fee. That is the current fee in okay. response to yes. one of your questions. And it applies to all changes, including correction of the error of date of birth. So it's not, more recently there's the NSSF at 45. You would not believe me, there are some people who are 35 who want to be 45 now. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's, and yet we are charged with keeping a secure, credible, and accurate database. So the point is, mm. how do we do this? Obtain as much information about you. One, two, deter changes that do not, that are not legit, that are not correct. The other thing I would like to, to, to correct, in the Parliamentary Commission, we were meeting to discuss what can we do. So Nira made a proposal. It was a what? A proposal. The process of hiking the fees is higher than Nira. Hmm. It is higher than Nira. And it, is, uh, it involves many entities, even your, even your representatives in parliament will vote on it. So it probably won't change. However, the credibility of the National Identification Register of Uganda is in question. If we do not find ways of addressing frivolous changes to the register, especially around facts such as birth. Notwithstanding, there are measures being put in place like we're trying now, even the new system, we're going to have a, a new system, maybe in a year or two. Even the new system is going to try and register people as close to birth as possible, so that that fact mm -hmm. is captured early. The reason we're having these challenges now is because the fact of birth was not captured in time, mm -hmm. as it's done in other countries. But now we are, drive, we are, we are promoting and driving that as soon as a child is born, during the time of immunization and whatever, let us capture their birth so that as soon as they are born, they are having their records captured. And some of this information will never be in question. Okay, you have highlighted on the fact that, and this entirely uh, falls on the part of the individuals or the applicants, mm -hmm. but I would like you to give us an uh, insight on if this uh, era falls on the side of NERA officials, if they are the ones who made the era in the first place, how will this be uh, rectified? That's another sensation I've listened to with a, with a bit of amusement. The first time you register, you fill a form. You do what? You fill a form, yes. You fill a form. 
as a part of the enrollment process. They scan that form that is in your own handwriting. They scan it and actually they cannot save the record of your enrollment unless that form is scanned. Why? Because they thought of a day like today when it's he said, she said. Hmm. Okay? So when you come to our offices and you're re requesting to correct any information, some lady highlighted uh, she paid one million to have her names changed. Yes. changed As, uh, uh, her uh, other her name, name to be included. Uh, yeah. Yes. They retrieve the form. Okay? Yes. Look at it. Okay? And establish who made the error. So it's not rocket science. Mm. It's not magic. Mm. African magic. It's the form you filled yeah. is present. <laughs> and oftentimes, people want to forget that they filled that form. That form yes. Was still. At the bottom of that form, there is a declaration that I hereby declare that what I have submitted mm. is true to the best of my knowledge. Yes. And I am the one who has submitted it. Yes. And I swear that it is true. That is why when you are changing any information, we ask you for a statutory declaration because you are annulling that fact hmm. that you first asserted yes. on your, on the feeling of your form. Now, at the time you first fill the form, we don't tell you what to fill. You tell us, eh? 1993, 2000. Mm -hmm. At that time, you are the one who tells us what you are. Your names, your everything. Hmm. So I need to make something very clear. I apologize to the lady who has highlighted that she was still made to pay. The what one million mean, shillings, I'm sure, is not fees to Nira. It was actually no, for a dead poor. Yeah, or something like yeah. that. So I apologize to her that she had to go through that. Yeah. But in other instances, you, we check and where the occasion, error. there are several people who come, the error is occasioned by Nira, that the register is updated. Mm. Actually, the register doesn't even have to be updated. Why? Because the facts are there. Yes. Yeah. So they put the right name, usually the, 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 what was put as a maiden name is what someone wants to appear, mm. and that is corrected. And a reprint of the card is done. Okay, let's move on to the next. Now, mm. uh, definitely we have uh, seen rectification cases where people who are applicants rather are uh, asked for their pictures to be retaken. Yes. Yes. But they are they are asked to submit the same information that they did submit earlier on when they were registering. Now, doesn't this really um, put this process? Doesn't it make it redundant in a certain way? Because if you are I think you're contradicting yourself. Mm. Because this same person will come back and say, no, now my age is different. <laughs> so they must fill another form. another form. You understand? So if you're saying that this is no longer my age, mm -hmm. you will be required to fill another form mm -hmm. to give us your new particulars. Mm -hmm. If you wish to change anything, you'll have to fill another form. So that we can have a record of the two stages. And the system keeps the record of, of your the previous, first form yes, and the your current. second form. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a standard that governs uh, identification documents, uh, and specifically travel. It's called ICAO, I C A O, mm -hmm. ninety three. It says if you've not seen a person for nine, uh, for at least six months, yes. if they come for any, to make any contact with the identification authority six months after their last, maybe that's, you may be enrolled 
what's this month? Maybe you enrolled in November, mm -hmm. and now yes, you want exactly. something. They advise that we retake your biometrics, because in that, in that period of identification document, six months is a long time. Mm -hmm. You may have changed, you may have wearing mm -hmm. dreads, yes. you may be, uh, your fingerprint could have deteriorated, something could have happened to your iris, or mm -hmm. one, one of the biometrics may have substantially changed, requiring that we update the register with more credible and accurate yeah. information. Yeah. So yes, at the time of, the word you have used is rectification. rectification yes. It means you are correcting An something. Mm. Therefore, we like to have a record of what you are correcting. Mm. And that record is collected in a form. Yes. Yeah. And in the event that uh, this particular person doesn't have that information from way back, what happens? In the event that... Uh, they do not have that required information. The information that they used before, um, they do not have it now because you say they have to have that information from before so that they can, you know... No, um, I think... I mm. said we have a copy you of do the have information. Copy. You feel before mm. it is scanned. I repeat for emphasis, it is scanned and kept. Yes. Yes, so we do have a copy. You have, as nearer you have As it. nearer, the nearer system has a copy of your, of all the information you come giving us. Mm. Yeah. All of it. You do have it. We have it. Okay. <laughs> Whichever you, even tomorrow you come with something else, we have a copy yes. of all that information. Okay. Now, there is available information on your website as well as on your social media platforms. But mm. what explains the fact that um, the certain section of the population responds to NIRA like they have never been communicated to? Communication is an ongoing process. That's why you appear every morning on the news set mm -hmm. to tell people something. Yes. Many times you repeat what you said even the previous day. Mm -hmm. Even the, the song, BBC World Service, is the same song. Why? For the same reason that you rise and shine, you say that every morning. Mm -hmm. Why? Emphasis creates learning and anchors messages. I will not attempt to defend us mm. on this front. Yes. I will not. I think we may have not done enough in terms of, co of communicating mm -hmm. the needs, our role, and what you need to come with. Yes. And that is a journey that I would like to take with media houses. How long has C been here? C has only invited me when there's a Twitter controversy. But there are people every day at Kololo <laughs> and, and coming and wishing they had an opportunity to learn of what they need before they came. So I also want to take a job at the media. Mm -hmm and say, how much of your programming mm. is informational and not sensational? I watched uh, the clip before this. Yes. I'm going to be given 30 minutes, but 30 minutes were taken to reread what was written on Twitter. I wish 30 minutes were taken to explain to people the importance of credibility mm. of an accurate register and of non-changing information. Hmm. A national identification register applies not to just this country. It's a source of information about citizens of this country around the world. Therefore, if we do not guard its credibility, our information will lose credibility around the world. Yes. Ugandans will travel to London and they will be taken through an age analyzer. Yes. Because no one is sure about their date of birth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing I would like to correct. Yes. The edge analyzer, it's not Nira asking for it. Mm. It's the Directorate of Government Analytics, Analytical Laboratories. Mm. And why? Because we have put them to task to find a scientific means Given that we have this challenge of information, some of it is not on purpose, some of it, some of it is on purpose. Mm. Instead of trafficking our children and they die abroad, 
yeah. because they were too young to carry the, to carry the labor that yes. they wish to carry. We are saying get a scientific way of ascertaining what their age is mm -hmm. and it's not a think of a number or I get, he said, she said. Yes. So we are saying let's find a way. What's the cost of this labor? What's the cost of a life? What's the cost of the lives of the young people who lose their lives on job? A good percentage of them are much younger than they are purporting mm. to be. Yes. Yeah. Okay, before we go into, you know, uh, my next question to, do, to you, I'd like to, you know, <laughs> um, the, the essence of the Twitter jobs one is actually to give background information to the viewer out there on what is triggering this conversation. And that's, that is why we sit here on Twitter jobs to, to, for an authority to address that particular matter. So it's basically about <coughs> giving background information so that they can understand where the, and addressing concerns as well to ascertain where the conversation is coming from. I appreciate that. Mm. However, reputation is emphasis. Mm. I wish reputation. You read a few facts about the mandate of Nira. Mm. I wish you had repeated those as much as you had repeated I the Twitter <laughs> jobs. You understand? I wish yes. you had repeated, <laughs> repeated the, the documents people need for yes. this as much as you had repeated that. Because <laughs> repetition is emphasis. Yes. So you are telling people. Stay with your misery on your rumor, eh? mm. rather than know what you need to come with. <laughs> but this is why we have you here, so that you can actually give you know a clear directive of clear information. And I'm, and I'm glad to the and I appreciate. I do yes. appreciate. Okay, now I'd like to know from you, uh, what are the approved fee structures for Nira services that Ugandans need to be aware of? The first thing I needed to correct also an impression I saw and had. Mm. I would actually, I would have loved the other lady to interview me, but she had so many malinformations or misinformations. Mm -hmm. An ID is free. Your first ID is free of charge. Yes. You're not supposed to pay anyone and if you pay anyone, uh, let me, I, I'll give you an incident of just this week when I was handling a corruption incident. Mm. A lady calls me, says someone took from me 500,000 shillings yes. to process my ID. I said, very good. Come to my office. Personally, come to my office. Mm -hmm. I'll take your hand. She even gave me the names and the numbers of the people. Okay? Yes. I said, hey, no, I'm not the complainant. I need the complainant to complain formally. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Write a statement. I guaranteed her protection. I said, come and write a statement. And as soon as you write a statement, we shall lead prosecution on that matter. Hmm. Two days later, she said, you know, these people returned my money. It's okay. I'm no longer interested in writing the statement. Hmm. So I do agree there are corruption instances. But the extent and anger with which we speak on Twitter is the same boldness that we should have to hmm. stand up to prosecute such cases. I invite the public to give me one person who has taken money from them. Mm. I will personally take it up. Yes. But there are procedures within the law. Like I, when they take money from you, I can't write your statement. Mm. You understand? Yes. You would have to, as part of the investigative process, you will have to declare that to a CID officer, that so and so took my money, I made them and such. You'd have to establish the facts of the case. Yes. And we as an organization guarantee you protection. So I do invite the public. Uh, the Waganda have a saying mm. that I invite you. Mm. My office is open. Come. For those of you who've been fleeced on your first ID mm. and paid a lot of money. We don't need, by the way, the people doing this, they are the same people. So if we, ha if we even have one person or three people, we would save the next 100. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So just come and report this case. And together, let us stamp out corruption. Yes. So your first ID is free. Mm. There is a process called confirmation of information. That one costs 1,000 shillings. Um, 
birth certification. And I need to use my words carefully. I'm in the presence of a media house. Mm -hmm. There are three steps in birth. Mm -hmm. There is notification. There is registration. Notification is done by the hospital where you are done, you are born, or if it's in a community, by the parent or people who are present at birth. Mm. Registration is, after we've received notification, we add you to the register and give you a name. Now, certification is, I want a paper. I want to go with a paper on my birth. Yes. That certification process. For death and for birth is 5,000 shillings. Mm. I repeat for emphasis, 5,000 shillings. Enkumitano. Birth certificate mm -hmm. and death certificate. Yes. Information where an ID will be reprinted. A change where an ID will be re reprinted mm. costs 50,000 shillings. What does that mean? If you want to add a name and you want it to pe appear on your ID, okay? 50,000 shillings. So any change where your ID has to be reprinted will cost 50,000 shillings. Okay. I do, and I'm not, I, I do not want to, to create an impression that our services are as efficient as they, they should be. Mm. No, no, no. Someone highlighted that she took six months to get their ID. And I sincerely apologize to such, such people. I sincerely, because the law says the longest time we should take is 60 days. We are currently constrained, as I started, by the technology. The machines that were printing 100,000 cards a day mm -hmm. when they started are now printing between 300 to 1,000 on a good day. Okay. So, Government is in the process of acquiring new technology so that we can have a more efficient process. Mm. But as we work now, those are the challenges that we face. Mm. So I do, and sincere, I, I, I do apologize that our service delivery is not where it should be. We are working towards getting it where it should be. And hopefully in one year we'll have new technologies that will address some of these challenges. So I would request the media to invite us more mm. without controversy. Yes, <laughs> we'll do that. Mm. But anyway, I would like to get your final remarks on this particular matter and also on the services of NERA to Ugandans as we wind up this conversation. Okay. The proposal to increase correction of information of errors relating to date of birth was a proposal. Mm. We've heard your voice. It probably won't change. Mm. Other measures of the law may be invoked. I think if we prove beyond reasonable doubt it's not our fault, yes. we may invoke the other side. Because the law provides for a jail term, provides for, maybe we may have to use other measures mm. that are not to seen to be uh, abusing the livelihoods of Ugandans. However, the other side of the coin is we are charged with creating a secure, a credible, and accurate register of Ugandans. Mm. Therefore, measures have to be taken to protect the credibility of that register, number one. My other parting shot is that as you fill the enrollment form, if it's your first time, just to know that that is a permanent record of your biographical information. You know, because we are used to going to school and you fill a form and you cha change a school and you fill and no one remembers the other one. People sometimes fill the nearer form with the same way. So take your time. 
origin. Find out what your origin is. Because also your origin doesn't change. The late Sylvester Wenke is my yes. father. He can't change. <laughs> Maybe a DNA test will tell me something else. Yes. But for now, that's a fact. The lady who gave birth to me in Mulago is the same Dolly Cash. I mean, mm. she, that Never doesn't changes. change. Yes, you does. understand? Yes. So, let us take time. It is true sometimes by reason of the fact that this information was not taken as close to the event as possible. Mm. We are not sure. We are not sure. And we do even have change of particulars whereby you real, someone comes and says, I, I brought you up, but actually I was not your mother. Yeah. Your mother was somebody else. Mm. We handle maybe a hundred so cases a month in relation to that. So in essence, what I would like to advise the public, as you fill Form 3 for enrollment, take time to think about it. Take time to capture as accurate as, as possible information you have at that moment mm. in time because it is the hope of a credible register. Yeah. We have a duty as a nation to protect the credibility of our identification register because whether you like Nira or not, external people still retire, re, 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 rely on its data. Yes. So let us give as accurate information as we can and to that role. My last parting shot is with res in response to the outcry, we are trying to put in place new technologies mm -hmm. and new processes to improve service delivery. We will be coming back to you to ensure that we register you. And this time, when we are near to your parish, mm -hmm. please come and register so okay. that you don't have the trouble mm. of coming to us. Because yes. in the we, beginning 2023, we are going to do a mass enrollment and mass renewal of IDs. Mm. I know that th there will be a new controversy one of these days of why keep renewing the ID. But notwithstanding, this time we will come to you. If you've never registered in early 2023, do take the opportunity to come for registration as when you've come close to you. Mm. If you when we do mass renewal, do take the opportunity to do your mass renewal when we are as close to you as, as possible, possible. Yes. to save you the inconvenience of later having to come to our offices. Well, thank you so much, Miss Rosemary Kisempo, for joining us on Sunrise at Sea and also for addressing these particular issues that have caused a lot of uproar on social media from Ugandans. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there you have it. This has been Miss Rosemary Kisembo, and that is the Executive Director of NIRA. Thank you so much for joining us on Sunrise at Sea. Also on Twitter, Jabs too, but do not go anywhere. Sunrise at Sea continues. Don't blink. <laughs>